Welcome everyone to 284 News. My name is Javon Wilson. I'm Kamal Hins. And I'm Ron Grant. And we are so thrilled and happy to be coming to you live out of the beautiful British Virgin Islands. The content continues via our website, 284media.com. In today's news, the amended Gaming and Betting Act passed in the House of Assembly. Physical Planning Appeals Tribunal seeks a chairman as well as the Physical Planning Authority seeks a new member. We also see Najiko donating a state-of-the-art smart board to the Embadiza Thomas Primary School. A bill passed to merge the BVI Airport and Seaport Authorities and the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force continues to see a spike in theft of generators and yard tools. We have all the details of this and so much more after a word from our sponsors. You're watching 284 News. You value traditions. To move in. You value music. You value education. Family. I love you. <laughs> Service. Thank you. You're welcome. Love. Life. At Popular, we're committed to you and everything our community values. For the things you value the most, count on us. Popular. Welcome everybody. It is Friday, September 24th, 2021. We're coming to you live and direct from the beautiful British Virgin Islands. A happy Friday to each and every one of you. I'm Ron Grant. And my name is Javon Wilson. Happy to be here, of course, to deliver your daily dose of local, regional, as well as international content. Now, topping our summary, we do see on a global scale, the number of new COVID-19 cases uh, continuing to fall as of last week, with now only 3.6 million new cases reported globally. That is down from an initial 4 million new infections from the previous week. Now, viewers, this is according to the World Health Organization. And of course, good news welcome by the entire world, I believe. Indeed it is. Of course, we are wondering, that is, is the BVI prepared for gambling laws, uh, pitfalls? Uh, the Honorable Melvin Mitch Turnbull makes the question in the House of Assembly um, and says it will create a loan shark. In addition to that, the school wall project, the school wall project, sorry, that is, uh, has scarred me an overhanging cloud on my business, save Mr. Steve Augustine as he mm. is sat before the COI. Viewers, we're going to head straight into today's newscast. Now, in an effort to ensure that governing bodies can work in tandem to meet the changing needs of the territory, BVI legislators have moved to pass and legalize the merging of the BVI seaport and airport authorities. This is under the Virgin Islands Air and Seaport Act 2021 that was proposed and passed in the House of Assembly just yesterday. Now, speaking to the debate was Territory Leader Honorable Andrew Foy, who highlighted that upon taking office, his government recognized the disconnect between the authorities. Mr. Speaker, when your government took office, uh, and around March 2019 thereafter, we found that Many of our statutory bodies and agencies were operating in silo when they should have been operating in synergy. We recognize that the nature of the work of some of these bodies were towards the same broad common goals. But what was lacking was a harmony in how they go about performing their functions so that if we could get them working in tandem with the left hand and the right hand working in coordination, we could achieve better efficiency and effectiveness for the benefit of the territory and for the people whom they serve and service. It is a popular topic at present, our decision to bridge this coordination gap in some of our statutory boards and agencies. This synergy is the policy position of your government. As we have sought to make clear, and this is why, as we sought to make clear, and this is why at the board level, we have ensured that measures were put in place so that there could be greater consistency, coordination, and communication among the different bodies and organizations. We have seen the good sense in this approach of having our bodies and agencies working in, coordinated, in a coordinated way, reflected in, reflected in how we manage the COVID-19 global pandemic, the rebooting and re-energizing of our economy, the reopening of our borders in December 2020, and the reopening of our tourism industry, just as one example. The results may not be perfect, and nothing is ever without room for improvement. But things could have turned out a lot worse if our bodies and agencies were not working as closely as they did during the course. Now, viewers, Premier Foy, under the consideration of Cabinet, also and further proposed that the statutory bodies be synergized. 
Speaker on 28 May 2021, Cabinet considered a paper on the amalgamation policy for the British Virgin Islands Airport Authority and British Virgin Islands Port Authority and establishment of the Virgin Islands Air and Sea Authority as a new statutory body. In the paper, it was presented that amalgamation of the British Virgin Islands Airport Authority, BVIA, and British Virgin Islands Port Authority, BVIPA, into the Virgin Islands Air and Sea Ports Authority can maintain and improve air and seaports services. Even though both the BVI Airports Authority and the BVI Ports Authority are well-functioning statutory bodies, the present era demands that they be configured to optimize. One, the efficiency of operation. Two, the availability of a greater range of resources and expertise within the authority to the benefit of the merged BVI Airports Authority and BVI Ports Authority and the existing functions within the department in the merger. Uh, opportunities to support investment in air and seaport infrastructure, thereby improving the transport assets of the country without recourse to public funds. The investment in technology and 21st century business models, while collaboration between agencies is important and necessary, it is insufficient in effecting change and improving information and communication technology, ICT, infrastructure and services development and their contribution to economic prosperity. The combined air and sea airport authority would be achieved by merging the BBI Airports Authority and BBI Ports Authority Acts to ensure... Now, viewers, the Premier reassured persons that there will be no job losses and also spoke to the position that will guide the processes uh, under the new merger, the positions, that is. Under the Act, the Board shall consist of not less than seven, no more than nine directors who, have, who are voting members of the Board, including a Chairman and Deputy Chairman, appointed by Cabinet for persons appearing to be qualified as having had experience of, of or having shown capacity in matters relating to A, airports and seaport affairs, B, industry, C, commerce, D, transportation, E, finance, F, law, G, government, and H, administration, and three ex officio members. The ex officio members shall be A, the permanent secretary of the ministry responsible for the airports and seaports, B, the financial secretary, and C, the managing director, and of the, the managing director of the authority. The Minister with Responsibility shall cause to be compiled and maintained in accordance with the Act and in such form as the Minister considers appropriate an interest register. Where any Director has an interest in any business conducted by the Authority, the Director shall file a written notice in the interest register as soon as reasonably practicable after the Director becomes aware that such business is being transacted. The authority shall, with the approval of Cabinet, appoint a managing director and a deputy managing director. The managing director shall, subject to the general directions of the authority, be the chief executive officer and be charged and be charged with the direction of the business of the authority, organization and the exercise, performance and discharge of its powers, duties and functions, and the administrative of course, viewers, that bill is now with the governor seeking his assent. Now, Ron, I know the leader of the opposition, Honorable Marlon Penn, yes. had a few concerns that he brought to the debate about this bill in particular, not necessarily objecting it, but wanting more information uh, based on what I was told by the legislators. They had those discussions uh, within the committee stages and were able to come to a resolve to, ha to have this bill passed. And beautiful. Uh, viewers, continuing on, qualified persons are invited to submit applications for the position of chairman of the Fiscal Planning Appeals Tribunal by October 4th. Now the chairman's responsibilities include but are not limited to examining the issues between the planning authorities and the physical plan and development applicant to determine the merits of an appeal of a planning decision having regard to the purpose of the Physical Planning Act and its relevant positions. The chairman must also apply the skills and knowledge needed to secure consistency in the execution of policy, any approved development plan relevant to the issues, and any other material planning considerations. Applications for the position of chairman shall be persons not in the public service and shall be uh, persons who have knowledge and experience in land development matters, environmental, coastal and marine matters, agriculture, commerce and industry economics, 
and financial matters, Crown lands, housing, infrastructure, and utilities, any other areas of public interest that the minister considered relevant to physical planning. Qualified persons must have at least a bachelor's degree and a comparable equivalent experience of at least 10 years in planning, architecture, building designs, building engineering, environmental design, and a demonstrable understanding of the physical land development with at least eight years experience as a resident and a professional within the Virgin Islands. Interested applicants should send uh, their cover letter as well as resume uh, to the address provided, of course, that is uh, on our website. We have that link for you. In addition to that, uh, qualified persons are also invited to submit applications for membership to the Physical Planning Authority and the Physical Planning Appeals, uh, respectively, also by October 4th. The function of members of the Physical Planning Authority include, but are not limited to, providing non-conflicted advice to advance the purposes of the Physical Planning Act and other relevant development planning laws in the Virgin Islands. They must be able to institute, complete, maintain, and keep under review a study of matters pertinent to planning the use of development of the land in the territory. Now, members of viewers must also prepare development plans in accordance with the Physical Planning Act, regulate development by the means provided by the Act, having regard to the need to secure consistency and uh, comfortability with development plans, prepare and submit to the minister for the subject reports on matters with the authority or the minister may have considered necessary or desirable having regard to the provisions of the act and do all other things necessary for carrying out the purpose uh, and provisions to the Physical Planning Act as a member. Uh, as authorized therein. Of course, again, applicants are to be submitted by October 4th. Jovan, we see where two opportunities uh, have become available and the government of the Virgin Islands as it pertains to the planning authority and the physical planning appeals tribunal are reaching out uh, for eligible candidates to submit their applications. All right, viewers, now still ahead of the break, we see the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force uh, now reporting a spike uh, in teeth of generators and yard tools and corporate BVI really rising to the occasion once yes, again indeed. with Nagico donating to the Ebenezer Thomas Primary School. We have all the details right after this commercial break. Viewers, welcome back. Now, in an effort to enhance the delivery of quality education in the territory, Nagico Insurances uh, recently joined with the Rotary Club of Central Tertola to donate a state-of-the-art interactive smart board to the Ebenezer Thomas Primary School. Now, viewers, Dr. the Honorable Natalia D. Whitley, the Minister of Education, Culture, Agriculture, Fisheries, Youth and Sports, accepted the donation on behalf of the school just yesterday. Now, viewers, Mrs. Shaquilla Smith, Nagico's manager and president of the Rotary Club of Central Tortola, Ms. Nelsia Singh Jean, uh, made the presentation surrounded by teachers, including the school's principal, Mrs. Sibyl Hodge. Now, Dr. Whitley, the Minister of Education, said, and I quote, on behalf of the Ministry of Education, Culture, Agriculture, Fisheries, Youth Affairs and Sports, and of course the Government of the Virgin Islands, I express my gratitude to Nagico and the Rotary Club of Central Tortola for their kind donation of a smart board to the Ebenezer Thomas Primary School. It takes a village to raise a child and it takes a community to operate a successful school. Those who take this, uh, their corporate and civic responsibility seriously are invaluable assets to the education system and we look forward to continually strong partnership with Nagico and the Rotary Club of Central Tertola. End of quote. 
Now, viewers, is the Smart Board's uh, 65 inch 4K ultra definition LED display provides optimal image clarity and viewing uh, angles. It is designed to bring lessons and presentations to life in a vivid, interactive way while having the ability to connect students with other classrooms, teachers, and learning resources globally. Now, viewers, Mrs. Shaquilla Smith of Nagico said, and I quote, more and more, we are seeing the important role that technology plays in education, particularly during this COVID-19 era, where in-person learning has not always been possible. Nagico Insurances will rem remain uh, supportive of the advancement of education in the territory. With the smart board, you can do everything on the interactive uh, flat panel that you can do on your computer, open and close applications, meet with others, create documents or edit existing ones, visit websites, play and manipulate videos, and so on by touching the interactive flat panels surface, end of quote. Now viewers, this smart board she shared is also equipped with the pen ID feature that allows the user to assign different appearances to the two pens and write or draw over any application in digital ink. Now, if yours, Mrs. St. John, sorry, of the Rotary Club of Central Tertullo, the president, that is, uh, says the club's goal is to strengthen the capacity of the formal systems to support basic education and literacy development. Mrs. St. John said, and I quote, Education is one of Rotary's six area of focus. We encourage the teachers and students to make full use of the smart board smart board, sorry, as a tool to enhance basic education and literacy, which are essential for reducing poverty, improving health, encouraging community and economic development, and promoting peace. Ron, another a brilliant example, I believe, yes, of corporate uh, responsibility and public-private partnership to ensure that our students have the best facilities and equipments for education. Like the Honorable Minister for Education said, it does take a village to raise a child and we continue to see this, uh, particularly as we uh, try to traverse through these very difficult times of COVID-19. Kudos to uh, Najico and of course uh, the Central Rotary Central Club of uh, Tortola. Continuing on, viewers, the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force is recording an uptake in a theft of generators, believe it or not, and tools left around private properties and roadsides unattended. This week, one resident of High Creek reported three generators stolen from her property while a contractor reported a generator stolen from his construction site. Weed eaters and blowers were also reported stolen from contractors engaging in roadside cleanup. While police are following several leads into suspected culprits, persons are asked to ensure that valuable items stored outside homes and sheds are secured when not in use. An uptake, of course, in the theft of these items. Uh, really, uh, persons are looking for items such as generators and tools which can easily be stolen from premises. Police are asking persons with information, of course, that could help in the identifying of perpetrators of these thefts to contact the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force through its three-digit access number at 311 or, of course, the intelligence uh, unit at 368-9339. Uh, viewers still ahead, the Gaming and Betting Act amended and passed in the House of Assembly, and we're looking closely as Tropical Storm Sam is now a hurricane. All this and so much more when 284 News returns. The wait is over! CCT Fire is here! Experience ultra-fast downloads, seamless streaming, and even more reliable connectivity on an all-new fire-blazing, super-fast CCT Fire network. CCT Fire, bring it home and upgrade today. Is business slow? Cash flow down? Hosting an upcoming event? We can help. Advertise with 284 Media and take your business or event to the next level by enhancing your present marketing and messaging strategies. Allow our team of experts to create a personalized ad that sets your business apart from all the rest. This could be your business or event. So, what are you waiting for? Contact our marketing team at 284media at cctbbi.com. Advertising with us works. Viewers, welcome back to 284 News. Now, yesterday, September 23rd, the newly amended Virgin Islands Gaming and Betting Control Amendment Act 2021 was passed in the House of Assembly. Now, the highly controversial bill will now make way for the legalization of online as well as betting activities. Now, despite criticisms, viewers, Premier of the Virgin Islands and Minister of Finance, Honorable Andrew Foy, said it is about time that we put laws in place to regularize what has already been occurring in the BVI. 
In terms of the economic benefits for the Virgin Islands, Mr. Speaker, I must reiterate that a properly regulated gaming industry presents a wealth of economic opportunities for the Virgin Islands, for the Treasury, and for our residents and belongers. And our commitment remains to ensuring that our gaming industry will, strictly, will be strictly regulated, strictly regulated, and I repeat, strictly regulated. Mr. Speaker, I will not repeat anything that was said last year when it comes to these benefits for the territory. I would simply remind all that we are seeking to regulate a practice that has already taken place in our shores. As we put the regulatory structures in place, we provide opportunities for entrepreneurship. We provide opportunities for people to establish gaming businesses with the electronic gaming as envisaged. Persons will be able to become outlets where these games can be accessed. These are economic opportunities. These businesses will require persons to fill a wide range of roles, from technicians for maintaining the machines and systems to hospitality and waiting staff. Navier's Premier of the Virgin Islands, Honorable Foy, also mentioned that not only will this industry demand better internet inf uh, infrastructure and services here within the territory, he also revealed that cruise ships will be expected to put their gaming services on pause while docked here in the BVI to allow for those passengers to take advantage of local gaming activities. He also very carefully laid out some critical global statistics that speaks to the economic viability of the industry, adding that the BVI too can benefit from their piece of the pie. According to the Gaming Global Market Report 2021, the global gaming market is expected to grow from $465.76 billion in 2020 to $516.03 billion in 2021 at a compound annual growth rate CAGR of 10.8% and $674.7 billion in 2025 at a CAGR of 7%. Many economies experience a significant boost from casinos paying, paying tax on their gross gaming revenue, GGR. Each country's gaming taxes and GGR system varies, but it's always a percentage of the net profit. In France, GGR can be as high as 83.5%. In gambling Mecca, Marco, it's uh, much lower at 29%, and the UK falls in the middle at 50%. Russia, on the other hand, has 0% GGR. And may I add some further statistics to highlight the market potential? One, it is estimated that almost half of the UK population participates in gambling activities. The country's economic economy, sorry, the country's economy has grown significantly thanks in part to gambling. A quick look at the statistics in the UK indicate 47% of Brits have, have gambled in some way in the last four weeks. 30% of Brits have taken part in the national lottery in 2019, making it the most popular type of gambling. On average, Brits spend 2.60 pounds per week on gambling totaling over £135.20 per year. The gambling industry was worth £14.3 billion pounds in Great Britain in 2019, down from £14.5 billion in six months before. The un industry collectively had 98,174 employees in 2019, down from 106,000 six months before. The National Lottery contributed £1.6 billion dollars to good causes in 2018 and 2019. So, Mr. Speaker, I reiterate that the gaming industry in the Virgin Islands, properly regulated, presents a lot of opportunities. Now, viewers concerned, District 2 Representative Honorable Melvin Mitch Turnbull argued that if not carefully regulated, this bill could mark the beginning of a social pitfall in the BVI. Honorable Turnbull said, and I quote, it will create an environment where we already have loan sharks. What will we have in place to deal with and combat the violence that will come with that? The opposition legislator questioned how the territory will be able to mitigate the inevitable rise in crime and violence that comes along with these type of industries, adding that it may destroy families. However, viewers, we see the Premier of the Virgin Islands strongly opposing this by reiterating that the gambling industry is already occurring here in the territory, very present. 
And he said it is his intention that the industry be regulated to reap some economic benefits and rule out negative behaviors. The bill is now before uh, the governor of the Virgin Islands for his assent. Now, Ron, I know Honorable Mitch Turnbull is very, very much concerned about how this will uh, influence the social fabric of the BVI community. But the premier of the Virgin Islands bringing to the forefront a very important and valid point. Valid point it yes. has been existing here. And one of the concerns we have locally is the, you know, the money laundering that the Premier mentioned, this bill is seeking to rule out. So we're just trusting that things can move along really quickly. And Jovan, there are a couple of things that I, I, I must say on this. First of all, I must uh, publicly commend the uh, Premier of the Virgin Islands, along with his administration, for having what I would consider the grit and guts to actually move this legislation mm -hmm. forward. Uh, this has been a conversation for decades, and yes. to be honest with you, uh, government uh, uh, former have not had the confidence, they have not had the stamina to to be able to move forward with mm -hmm. this legislation mm -hmm. and stand by it. There are a couple of things that we have to look at where the Honorable Melvin Mitch Turnbull, along with many others, are saying that this is going to introduce uh, a culture of loaning, it's going to in in introduce violence. Uh, like the Premier said, uh, gambling and betting has been taking place in the territory yes. uh, for quite some time. Mm -hmm. But when we look at uh, mobilizing our economy and really making way for certain industries, let's just take horse racing for an for example, uh, many persons speak about wanting to make horse racing a legitimate um, uh, sport and industry in the BVI, but that cannot happen without uh, the legalization yes, of parimutuel betting. Mm -hmm. uh, so I do think uh, that while there are concerns, um, we have to prepare ourselves to mitigate it, uh, but it is a step in the right direction, and I do think uh, that it is going to not only open opportunities for uh, many persons within the territory to, to operate legitimate uh, mm -hmm. businesses, but it is also going to help us to mobilize our economy. So kudos. Uh, to the FOIA administration for moving this forward. Awesome. Viewers, we are looking closely at Tropical Storm Sam, which has now been upgraded to a hurricane as of today, Friday, September 24th, 2021. Now, according to the National Hurricane Center and its 5 a.m. update, the center of Hurricane Sam was located near latitude 11.5 north longitude, that's 42.2 west. Sam is now moving toward its uh, west near 15 miles per hour, and this motion is expected to continue throughout uh, tonight. A decrease in forward speed and motion toward the west northwest are expected over the weekend now according to the national hurricane center sustained winds have increased uh, to near 75 miles per hour with a higher gust rapid intersection uh, in forecast is to continue and sam is more than likely to become a major hurricane uh, tonight into early saturday september 25th 2021 now hurricane force winds are extended outward up to 15 miles uh, for the center and tropical storm force winds. They are also extended outward to about 60 miles. The estimated minimum center pressure is 993 miles uh, per hour, as well as the Hurricane Sam is going to be the seventh hurricane uh, of the 2021 Atlantic hurricane season. Jovan, we're of course uh, keeping our eyes uh, keenly on Hurricane Sam, uh, making sure that we track uh, its happenings. Of course, we're still in September and it is quite an active uh, month uh, for hurricanes. Definitely peak season uh, when you think about that September month. And I think uh, a month that really reminds us, reminds us of the adversity of uh, 26, 2017, that is. I want to encourage viewers who are yet to, to download the DDM app and, of course, stay tuned to their the Facebook page, which um, I think they do daily updates on, do. on the storms. Now, viewers, that is it for today's News Roundup, but you can be sure to follow us via our website, 284media.com. We're also on Facebook at 284media and 284BVI uh, on Instagram as well as Twitter. My name is Javon Wilson. And I'm Ron Grant. Do enjoy the rest of your day and have a wonderful weekend. A happy Friday to each and every one of you. Continue to be safe and we'll see you on Monday. Bye-bye.